So after my last video, I hope you started being, I mean, thinking of how you get your own home. No time to waste at all. <laughs> okay? Right? So I hope you are motivated. I hope you are gingered, right? To buy your own property, okay? As a non-EU, yes, you can. I'll just be summarizing the steps of buying a home, an apartment in Malta. I'll try as much as possible to put all of this in four steps because it could be longer depending on how you choose to look at it. But basically, these are four major steps that you need to take in order for you to buy a property in Malta, okay? As a non-EU. To be honest, if you are an EU citizen or a Malta citizen, it is different. It is easier. Right, but as a non-EU citizen, which we are, for now, <laughs> these are the steps. Okay, so first of all, you need to visit the bank. It doesn't even have to be a bank that you already bank with. Just visit the bank. Tell them your, I mean, that you're interested in buying a property. So basically, the idea of visiting the bank first is so that you would not be looking for something that is impossible. Because at the end of the day, if you do not have the entire sum, if you still have to get this mortgage from the bank, then because obviously they'll be the ones to give you so they will ask for your salary how much you earn and if you have a partner how much the partner earns and of course your age and you know a few other questions right just for them to kind of know how much property how much loan they can give you and so that would serve as a guide as well when you're searching so that for example if the bank can only loan you 150k you won't start looking for a property that is 250k <laughs> Okay, or if the bank can loan you 500k, right, you will not start, you know, limiting yourself to searching within 200, you know, especially since you can do more. So basically, that's the importance of going to the bank first. At that point, there's nothing binding yourself and the bank. They're just basically giving you an info and you could go to two, three banks, right? Or other things like uh, maybe possibly to give you an idea of how much the monthly repayments will be. They'll give you that info as well. And other fees that are, are applicable to them. So for example, the, if there's an application fee, um, legal fees, and a few other fees, right? Please, at the bank, try as, that, this is number one mistake we made. At the time we were looking for a property, we only went to one bank. And that we just felt, oh, this is the bank we we'll bank with anyway. So no other person, no other bank will give us loan. And that was what we just talked with and we lost a lot. I mean, it was a, that was, I think that's one of like the biggest mistakes we made. But thank God, we just opted out as soon as we found another bank whose terms we were really comfortable with, you know. So please just look, I mean, you need to be very careful because there are some things that every, of course, every, everyone wants to sell and, you know, make it sound good and all. But please check, check, check and check that there are no hidden fees somewhere. See, I will just put it out there. The first bank we got, went to, they talked about a security. They didn't really emphasize that there will be a security deposit, right? But along the line, as after we had signed the, gotten the sanction letter from them and all, you know, we just found out that actually there would be a security deposit and they didn't really talk about this at the, in the first insta instance. So for example, if the monthly repayment is supposed to be 700 euros, it was for that part at this particular bank it was required that you have six months of i mean like six monthly repayments tied down you cannot touch it for life until you're done <laughs> can you imagine repaying the loan like come on how would i have just like five thousand euros just sitting down not doing anything at all but obviously at the time we signed got the sanction letter we had already paid application fee and i think some other fees Think almost like 600 euros but we had to lose it unfortunately sadly okay so aside that you also need to check things like how long they are willing to hold the load for you it is very important because i mean especially if it's a property if you are buying the property on plan or if the property is not ready and i mean at that time to move into because they will be collecting what they call is a commitment fee right yeah that's it commitment fee every month depending on the bank in the case of the first bank they're going to be collecting like 150 euros every month you know just i mean they, they could only hold it for six months and then after six months they will be charging 150 euros or was it 200 euros every month so see when i said we've got the property 2019 they're going to hold the loan till like june 2019 so i will move in 2021 so they would have been charging us about 200 euros from June 2019 
to 2021. <laughs> That's like almost, I mean, like 18 months, like you can imagine. At the other bank, they were willing to hold it for 48 months. Only 48 months? No. They were willing to hold it for 24 months, two years. And then afterwards, so they're going to be charging 50 euros for every three months or so. I mean, which is really fair. Okay, so it's very good to visit more than one bank. See the attempts. Check it. See. Check, check, check. Like, read it back. Up. If you do not understand the terms, ask someone. Or you could even involve a lawyer if you want to. But for me, that's extra funds. Just speak to someone. Look at it from front to back so that you will not make these mistakes we made. So after visiting the bank, now that you know how much property you should be looking out for, right? Start searching for apartments. That's the second step. Search. I mean, I wouldn't have listed this, but trust me, it is not easy to just find, visit one place and then decide that, okay, this is it. Because there would always be one corner or the other or one thing you like and one thing you don't. Just try and really, really search. We actually went to a lot of places. We had to ask for people's opinion in terms of living in certain areas, like especially thanks to Expats Malta. I mean, if you are not on Expats Malta group, just join that group and thank me later <laughs> right i mean thanks to Esmond Malta i remember there were two locations we were trying to consider at the time you see my post here there are two locations we were trying to compare and like thanks to them like we decided on the most um popular one and the one that like, we felt would really really suit us so just search for the apartment that you like and i mean most times it could be through agents or through the developer directly who got us on facebook by the way facebook is like the most popular so if you do not have a facebook account i think you should just create one now or reactivate it because facebook is like the market hub in malta they don't do ig a lot of those they are very old-fashioned so facebook it is like we found the property on facebook you could check marketplace you could check different agencies i mean check real estate companies as well or you could also I mean, in fact, this particular property we got, it was just a random ad we saw on Facebook and we we're like, wow, this amount, ooh, wow, this is amazing. The size was amazing. Like everything just seemed so perfect. And apparently at that time, the property had gone off market. So it was back on the market for some reason. And I think, I don't know, I think the person who got it or who was supposed to get it, they couldn't give the person the entire loan from the bank or whatever. I can't remember, but basically it just came back on the market and we saw it and we we're like, wow. Then the person up and that was it so, so search for the apartment depending on what you want if you want to buy a, a property on plan or a property that is already finished or are we talking about i mean the advantages and disadvantages in another video or you want a fully furnished apartment you just want to move in right away right so depending on all of this just search and you'll find i'm very sure because there are actually quite a number of properties in different areas springing up every day in malta so thirdly Find a notary. So at this point, you found, you kind of understand what you would get from the bank. You found the property. Find a notary as well. You know, sometimes, like in our own case, the owner, the developer just encouraged that, or was it the agent? I can't remember. Encouraged that we use the notary already in charge of the property so that it will make things easier. Especially if there are a lot of other people using the same notary. I think it will make the fees lower. I didn't see any major difference though, but it was a very short they're very very pleasant and amazing people okay so find a notary some people might be more comfortable if you have a notary of your own you could also use that because i mean you kind of already know this notary you know so so that there will be no clash of interest because i mean there are also disadvantages if you decide to use a notary the notary that the developer already uses i don't know if that makes sense the notary will give details on property tax stamp duty and every other thing that is needed in order for you to proceed with purchasing the property at this point as well there's all called promise of sale the promise of sale basically means okay the owner has agreed to sell it and so it's kind of binding between yourself and the owner okay so at this time the promise of sale will be signed as well yourself the notary and the developer would meet sometimes the agent would meet agree on fees how the fees will be paid in terms of the deposit please check through the terms in the promise of sale it is very important also it lists like everything that should actually be done before you sign the contract or even like i mean finishing and everything so that they won't say okay um doors will be fixed and at the end of the day no doors that kind of thing you know so everything that was advertised 
when you're checking for the property check well to be sure that it's also included in the promise of sale drainages and you know everything that would basically make the property habitable yeah right so the promise of sale should include all of those check the promise of sale well just to be sure that you are covered and i think one mistake we made and that was because we did not know so like i mentioned there are two mistakes now the first mistake in terms of the bank and in terms of the notary as well at the point when you are signing the promise of sale include it there especially if you are buying on plan right include it there that if this property because even the promise of sale will also contain when the property is going to be finished like in our own case they mentioned that the property will be finished june 2020 that was in february 2020 2019 they said it was going to be finished june 2020 guess what one year later we moved in november 2021 and at the time we moved in in fact up till now it's not like it is completed yes our own apartment is completed you know and habitable but like the common areas at the time we moved there was no even light in the common area there was no door like there was no <laughs> there was no door to the common area like every the common area was not nothing was as in there was nothing at all right but we decided to just move in because we we're tired of waiting but just kind of agree on these terms let's be written if possible in the promise of sale that see if this because that was eventually we realized that that's what they actually do so if the property is not ready at the time it was supposed to be ready. although covid affected to be honest right but if the property is not ready at the time he said it was going to be ready usually there's there'll be some sort of commitment or agreement like okay i'll pay the owner will say okay maybe he would pay 500 euros till it's ready finally now that you have the promise of sale in hand take it to the bank also sorry to i didn't mention that the promise of sale should also include that this property, it is subject to a few terms, like the bank actually giving you the loan or getting the AIP permit or getting approval from the government or whatever it is, right? Let all of these terms be included. Anyway, the notary would advise you accordingly because in the event that you do not get the loan from the bank and you've already paid the, some sort of deposit or commitment fee, it's your loss because you will not get it back if it is not stated on the promise of sale. So, right, so when you have the promise of sale, you get to the bank, uh, of course, present the promise of sale to them, and I think a few other documents, in our own case, I think they ask for pay slip, they ask for contract, I mean, work contract, they ask for, yes, another thing they ask for that we really struggled with was receipt, just to kind of show, and here in Malta, when you pay your rent, it's mostly cash, so it's not like it's like bank transfer that you can now provide statement of account, right? So we needed to start following up with the landlord to get receipts. Like basically they just wanted to be sure that okay, you've actually been paying this rent. And if you could pay this rent for God knows how long, then you'll be comfortable. It would be very easy for you to pay your mortgage repayment. Okay. So we had to get a receipt from the owner. Yeah. So you can just even for every I think aside even getting a property, I think it's just good to kind of get some sort of confirmation or whatever it is from your landlord you know showing that you paid rent right so i think it was received i think that was actually all we didn't really ask for so much okay so of course at that time we didn't even have an okay we had an account at the bank so after you submitted your documents i think it takes about two weeks or so they are now supposed to present you with a sanction letter right so basically agreeing that okay yes they're giving you this loan these are the repayment plans. This is what is expected, you know, for you before you get signed the contract. The sanction letter from the bank was about 10 pages. Like, it was so, <laughs> it was so bulky. We didn't get any lawyer. We didn't do any of those. We read it ourselves and we kind of understood. For anything you do not understand, just ask them, right? So, it would include a lot of things. It would even include things like architects' um, fees, like even the process of what would it would entail when you want to eventually sign the contract just so that you prepare ahead, okay? So the sanction letter would include all of this. I think at this point, they would charge you for legal fees and application fee. Some banks, they don't even have all these fees, really, yes. As I, I mentioned, just go to as many banks as possible. Choose the one you are comfortable with, okay? So once you have the sanction letter, you can now relax and take a chill pill. <laughs> I mean, if it's a property that is still unplanned or not finished, uh, furnished, you really do not have to do anything at this point. So when it's uh, when it's almost concluded or when it's almost time for you to move in, you can now start rolling around for insurance and all of that. Okay. So once property is completed, 
you're ready to sign the contract you of course you already have your insurance you then visit the bank's head office so yourself um the developer the notary right would all meet at the bank's head office to sign the contract and the property is yours <laughs> all right so i mean that's it that's that's basically how it works so these are the four steps just recap again you, vis you visit the bank to know how much property you should be looking out for start searching for apartments and decide on one you the notary get the pos and you know everything that comes with it by the way for the promise of sale as well i think before you even get the promise of sale the notary will also advise you on the stamp duty and property tax that needs to be paid so that ha i think it's one percent of the total fee yeah so we have to pay that as well before alongside the 10 percent deposit okay so that's it contract is signed keys will be handed over to you Stephanie. so please if you have any questions do not hesitate i'll be more than happy to answer your questions like see it would give me so much joy like you have no idea it would give me so much joy if one person just finds this video useful and actually eventually proceeds in getting a property as a result of this video thank you bye please do not forget to like this video share subscribe i mean really if you, when you like the video it improves the algorithm so just share do not keep it to yourself share share we want as many property owners as possible okay <laughs> bye